Uh, counselor? There's a raccoon stuck in the vending machine. That's so annoying. I wanted a snack. Welcome to Trail Mix, our mini episodes from Camp Counselors Podcast. Each week, the stories come from you, our Camp Shady Birch campers. We want to hear your juicy gossip, top secret confessions, embarrassing and scary stories, and sprinkle in our sage counselor advice. Trail Mix is for the campers. And God, do we love you. Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Trail Mix. I'm hungry for those nuts and chocolates and fruits. Oh, I'll eat raisins. You don't even like raisins. No, I think they're okay. I like the golden raisins. I'm sorry. Say the bet. That's okay. Uh, This is our mini episode where we read listener submitted stories. So thank you to our listeners for submitting stories. Your hat looks like a raisin. Maybe like a cran raisin, like a craisin. Oh, oh my God, you're so right. It's craisin. I hate raisins. I love craisins. I love craisins. I like the golden raisins. Raisins I can do without. Sometimes they have that weird white dust. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Do I have to rinse this off? You know what's hot about a raisin? What? A raisin nat. <gasps> she, went to, she went to Hollywood. Mm. She got her little go-go shoes. And she's a dancer, and she's performing, and she's actually up for an award right now. She rebranded. That's a girl who said, I'm not going to let my family and my history dictate my future. I'm going to take my life by the the horns, and I'm going to be the best version of myself. Raisinette is truly the all-American dream. And you know what? She's been in movie theaters across the country for centuries. It's so funny how, like, in Spanish, there's like things that have like masculine and feminine pronouns or whatever, like like el or la, like how they start words. And in English, everything is just the, right? But I do feel like some things just maybe not like say like gender wise, but like energy wise, some things are just so much more feminine. And like a raisin, that's not a man. That's a woman's energy. That's a woman's touch. That's a little je ne sais quoi. Like a raisinette, that's a bad bitch. We love her for it. We love her for it. Anyways, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Completely off topic. Um, we've been we've been hearing some things. And we, it's not it's not word on the street. No, it's a it's a pitter, it's a powder, it's a scratch, it's a sniff. We don't know what's going on. So if you hear it during this recording, well, first off, somebody's rudely driving by camp. I'm going to keep that in, uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> so uncredited. So. And uh, so we 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 think we might have a critter rooming with us. No, we definitely have some sort of mouse in the wall. It's it's funny, right? Because like in, okay, in a, so in our apartment in Brooklyn, let's just be real for a minute. Like all the buildings are attached. So like if something is in one building, it can get to the next. So in between, like in our ceiling, there is this weird for the past week, like only at night. Well, we're not really like around to even notice it during the day, but we could be happy during the day. During the night, there's some sort of like, you can hear, something's walking around the ceiling. Something is absolutely walking around. And I think it's really adorable and endearing that you call it a mouse. It is a mouse. What do you think? When you say critter, what are you thinking it is? Babe, we're in New York City. I think it's a little rat looking for food. Oh, well, you know what though? Like rats and mice. Like, no. Truly like, there's so Sisters. They're distant cousins. No, they're more than distant cousins. They're at the same table. If I see a field mouse, first off, <laughs> where are the field mouse? In the field, of course. I know. They have the same energy as raisin ads. They just have big dreams, field mice. And they're <laughs> tiny and they're cute and they could be in a little tutu. New York City rats? Oh, they smoke cigars. Yeah, they've been through some shit. For some reason, they're all like 22 years old. Who would you rather party with? Probably a mouse. I'd rather party with a New York City rat because he has the cigarettes and the pizza and he knows all the cool, dirty clubs. Anyways, we're not making this up because Buffy, my kitty cat, knows that it's happening. Like, she will be sitting on the couch looking so fucking cute and she will look up at the ceiling when we hear the noise. So she hears it too or she'll look up before we hear it. Oh my God, no, she can hear, like, so when it's a really deep skirty, we definitely hear it, but sometimes there's, like, a quiet movement that we can't even hear, and her ears go back, and her eyes turn to saucers. Oh my God, And she's, like, darting across the ceiling, and I'm like, it's a little unsettling, but I'm okay with it because I know that we don't have any holes in our apartment. We've been here for a long time. We've never had an issue like this, so there's no way that, like, right now, but I did read a statistic that mice, well, I don't know about rats, but mice can fit into a whole, a fourth of the size of their body. 
Well, I need a visual. Can they fit through an electrical socket? Well, it depends how big the mouse is. Oh my God, you're so right. Last night I was sitting on the couch and I had a thought. I was like, what if the mouse comes through the the light bulb? The light bulb thing. Well, he'd probably electrocute himself. Oh my God, you're so right. It would just like delete itself for sure. But last night we did hear, and by we I mean me and Buffy because you were up here. I heard something that sounded like um, maybe a human and it sounded like it came from our basement. And no I, way. I did check the ring. When I sent you that picture last night, I'm not even, I'm not joshing you. This is no Joshua matter. I sent you that picture of her like bugging out and she kind of moved before I took the picture. So she didn't look as scared as she was, but it sounded like there was like something at the door. So I jiggled the handle and I was like, stop it. And I checked our ring doorbell and nothing happened because we would see if somebody had entered the house that way. I checked the backyard with my little flashlight and there was simply nothing there. Yeah, the family of rats have then all stood on each other's shoulders and they have a big trench coat. Yeah. And they're going door to door selling cheese. Well, I'm in the market. Should we get into our stories? <laughs> yes. Okay, so what have you got on the docket? My first story is, uh, it's a camper asking for help dealing with the worst kind of in-laws. Uh, we have a social media manager's worst nightmare. A camper who I think is truly the definition of a good for her. You know that meme? Good for her. That's really what I feel about her. And a non-licensed camper who cosplayed as a hairdresser and made it to the top. Oh, I can't wait. Let's get into it, campers. Are we qualified to be giving advice? No. Are we going to do it anyway? Absolutely. Welcome back to Dear Counselors. This is the part of the show where we give advice to you after you write into us. Like we always say, write on the website, write on the email. You already know the drill. Dear Counselors. Hi, guys. My family and I always get a good laugh from your Instagram content and your podcast. Thank you for making my commute to work entertaining and just an overall good start to my day. So I need advice regarding my relationship. You can call me Clarabelle, and let's call my boyfriend Goofy. Okay, I'm here for it. Listen, you always have to play to your audience, and that's what a good performer does, and this is a good performing camper. She's like, okay, I'm going to go with Clarabelle, because Jonathan's ears are up like Buffy's last night. They're parked like my perky breasts. (laughs) (laughs) I got you, didn't I? It did. I'm like still, I'm a little warm. Hey, if you're lucky, I'll show you later. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I have a good story about that for next week. Oh, God. Oh, is that this week? No, right. we'll get you, to that. You'll hear it eventually. That'll make sense eventually about perky breast. Um, <laughs> it will. It'll be really funny when they hear that one. That was a good one. Um, we have been dating for three years, and he's by far the best guy that I've ever dated. Good for you. It's really hard to find good people in this world, so I'm really, really happy for you. Um, we hit it off instantly, and our first date wasn't awkward, which is rare for me. LOL, first dates are gross. <laughs> True. <laughs> However... The women in his family are catty around me, and it's been affecting me. Mm. Oh, God. His sister once asked me where I get my nails done. And when I told her, she said, there's a reason that place has low prices. Oof. That is like, first of all, that is like not even subtle. That is just like straight up rude. It's Regina George. Where did you get that? It's even worse because then the girl walked away and said, that's the ugliest fucking dress I've ever seen. Skirt or whatever. She said it right to her face. This is like beyond rude. His mom has also talked about an ex-girlfriend of his in front of me, saying that she kind of looks like me. I wanted to say that she was a beautiful girl. That to me, like, could be like. Yeah. So I think I don't. I'm, I'm on your side, camper. I'm always on your side. That one, I feel like I had to be there to hear that one. You know yeah, because I mean? it could be like she looked like you. She was a beautiful girl, as in like you're a beautiful girl. But I, yeah, I agree with you. We're on the camper side, 100. percent Yeah, like my mom has said some of the most inappropriate stuff in, in front of you and my exes, and I always have to pull like you or my ex aside afterwards and was like, I can't control this woman. My mom is like, when am I going to meet Jonathan's parents? I'm like at the wedding, and that would be the only time you have a chance to embarrass me because my parents have zero filter. It's like walking on eggshells. It's like, oh my God, it's insane. That's how I like to smoke cigarettes. No filter, baby. They also made fun of how pale I was even after I went through melanoma. That's that's pff, not see, that's okay. Crazy. You could have finished that sentence before we were like, we but, kind of got it. Well, that's the storytelling we're doing. Yeah, that's great, Camper. That is crazy to make a cancer joke to you. Yeah, that's not crazy. Not that you should repeat it, but what did she say? That's not. I like all I can say is that's crazy. Oh my god, people have no shame. I've spoken to Goofy about it, but he dismisses their behavior and says to me, you've never been catty? Okay, yeah, everyone has a moment when the claws come out, but that's besides the point. I would just like to have him defend me sometimes, but I do understand that he's in a tough position. 
I have been distancing myself from his family for my own sanity and for our relationship, but I wish he would open his eyes and stick up for me. Do you guys think that I'm just being sensitive or is this a problem? And what do you guys think I should do? Sincerely, Conflicted and Cabin 6. I think this is a really great story because I kind of start off by giving my advice. Please. I feel like you are so grounded and you are so level-headed. And I'm going to be here to start off by saying that you have such a great perspective because it feels like at every opportunity, you have been giving them the benefit of the doubt. You've been giving Goofy the benefit of the doubt. But it's time for you to stand up and say, you know what? I've been patient enough. You guys have been together. I'm sorry. Was it three years? Three years. That's a long time. You've really committed a long time. You're in it for the long haul, and that's amazing, and you love him. He needs to back you up. This is something that makes you uncomfortable. You are going to be at family parties, holidays, sharing your time when you could be spending it with your family, and at some point, you're going to be with his family. The least they can do is not insult you. You know what I mean? Like They need to be put in their place, and I do feel like it sometimes is really difficult to be that person, and I, I wouldn't want to do that either. But the least he can do as your man is respect you and be like, mom, sister, you're not going to speak to someone that I've been around, been with for three years like that. Okay. A memory is one thing. Bringing up melanoma is so like just disrespectful. It's really rude. Let's talk about the goofy ass of it all. At some point she said it, he is put in a bad position, right? And he is, but no, like wait, you wait, have wait, to on, stand let me, up. Let me finish. I'm sorry. He's not in a bad position because when you told him your concern, his immediate response was, you've never, you've never been catty? Yeah, that's like, a that's, a, that's not him in a bad position. That's him being a fucking idiot and an asshole. And I'm sorry. Like, I, okay, wait, let me calm it down. <laughs> yeah, that was... Let's run that one back. <laughs> not let me run that back. <laughs> that's just him being insensitive and invalidating to you. And the least... Like you said, the least he can do is not only talk to them about it, but kind of validate your feelings because you shouldn't be questioning whether you're too sensitive or not. If you feel this type of way, you feel this type of way and you're valid for that. So he should be saying something. Yeah. And I don't think it's your position at this point right now, especially this early in the conversation, because that's the real benefit of it here. Let's look at the silver lining. It seems like the conversation really hasn't progressed past, oh, you're just, you've never been catty. So there's really good groundwork here to really work through this without having to get them involved. It's really easy for him to talk to his parents it's like oh you're putting him in a bad position it's gonna be a lot worse if you say it so he's gotta man the fuck up and stick up for his woman okay or you'll have these two gay men knocking on thanksgiving door with a side of mashed potatoes and some petty ass salsa you want to okay? talk about melanoma yeah let's talk about your leather ass skin bitch maybe you should put some fucking spf on that shit we're like, we don't even know they're tan. I know. <laughs> so they could have been. Well, I feel bad for her. I do too. Camper, we're on your side. And talk we to have, him. Talk to him. Have the discussion and don't be as angry as I did. I'm sorry. I got angry on your behalf. This is our second episode of the day and I've had a white claw. Anyway. This is a really big secret. Thank God we're on a body of water. This is Confession Canoe. Welcome back to Confession Canoe. We actually have three Confession Canoes. I don't know what your story is, but my two are... Um, quite the delight. So let's get into it. Oh, sorry. This is the part where if you have something to confess, confess it to us. It's basically like going to confession in the Catholic church, but doing it with two gay men in a canoe. Yeah. And oh God, like not us being the priests. <laughs> Ow! That's so fun. I never thought about that. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And that's literally how mine starts out. Fuck. That's crazy. Go. It's your turn. Okay. You can call us father or you can call us daddies. <gasps> So, Confession Canoe. That's so funny. It just keeps getting Forgive better. Forgive us daddies. Somebody <laughs> give these gays a podcast. In all caps. I tried to cut this down. I'm sorry it's so long. Writing is my gift and my curse. <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. I'm, like, realizing which story this is. This is good. This is juicy, you guys. And I did cut something out because I didn't know if she was okay with talking about what this was. You're going to get it in a second. I used to work at a very, very popular online-only fashion company. And I really need you to pause right now and think to yourself, what is the most popular online fashion company that's been very prevalent on social media for years? Okay, so we're just going to leave it at that. So this camper used to work there. This job was hands down the most toxic, worst environment I ever placed myself in. And I was their first and only copywriter for the first six months in 2018. Oh, wow. So I was required to come up with 24 Instagram captions a day, plus... All email campaign copy, plus subject lines, plus 
website banner copy that rotated every week plus one solid Twitter meme per day. That's insane as a copywriter because like, yeah, like think about it, like you can do that one day, but to have to do that every single day, it's like how many new ideas can I think of every single day? And That's crazy. That is so crazy and you gotta be creative. And back then there was no chat GPT. You couldn't like funnel that somewhere. You had to like Google fun outfit Instagram captions and you had to tweak it accordingly. 20, oh my God, that's way too much. No one, that's how they keep their clothes so cheap. Wait, I have a clever joke. Yeah. I was gonna say, it's like Groundhog's Day. What's the joke? Cause today is Groundhog's Day and her life working there was like Groundhog's Day cause it was oh, like the same thing every day. Yeah. That was so clever. And you no, sorry, that, that is clever. Cause we're recording on Groundhog Day. Oh yeah, yeah, Sorry, that was clever. You guys, it's coming out on February 19th. <laughs> Yeah, but we, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't forget thinking. Forget it. Just delete that. No, uh, Huckleberry fan. What's his name? Phil? Anyway. Texas Honey Phil. Thank you. <laughs> I should I know, know that. I know you mean, I know Pennsylvania. You. Jesus Christ. Okay, where was I? Uh, point being, that was a lot for one person. So I would just try to knock out as much as I could as quickly as possible because I was working 12 hours a day and still unable to get ahead of schedule. Oh my God, she's literally working by herself too. She like doesn't have a team, has nobody. That sucks. Mm -hmm. And you guys, in all caps, there was no approval process. It was literally just me sending shit in a spreadsheet to the social media manager who would schedule the posts. One Saturday, our camper says she's at the beach. She had left her phone at home, blah, blah, blah. So basically she didn't have her phone on her for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. After a relaxing day at the beach, I return home and check my phone. I had 17 missed calls, a million texts, and multiple truly venomous voicemails. I would be shitting myself. And it's on a Saturday. No, I are trying to unplug and that's what happens. That's what <laughs> happens when you, and that's why I stay plugged. <laughs> yeah, because you can't get 17 venomous voicemails if you stay plugged. There you go, everybody. This weekend, stay plugged, both electronically and anally. Okay, so one of the Twitter memes that she had come up with gained a lot of traction. I'm going to try to explain it. And there is a screenshot attached that was found on a Reddit thread that wasn't posted by this person. It was on Beauty Guru Chatter. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like where everybody talks about everything that's going on like in the beauty community. <laughs> this is so shady. This is in um, June 30th, 2018 at 6 p.m. Me. So what do you do for work? Unemployed person. And under that is a gif of Frankie Grande. And it says, I'm a social media mogul. So keep in mind, campers, this company, this fast fashion company with very cheap clothing that is online only works a lot with influencers, like a lot with influencers. So keep that in mind as this post was basically shitting on influencers who are unemployed, unemployed person that our camper came up with. So obviously bad from my company's angle and obviously content creators work their asses off. I will stand by my opinion that not all content creators are created equal and most of the influencers we work with we worked with were hot people who would just pose in matching sets, post and collect a check. Go off, get your bag. I was obviously jealous. At least in hindsight, she can recognize that. Yeah, I get it. Because the content creator is a really broad term, but like some of the people like that, it's just like, yeah, you posted a, you in a t-shirt and you collected that check. And yeah, that's but what that was attacking. Imagine you're working as a content creator, as, a, as an influencer. You're working for this company, posting and tagging them and stuff. And then you go to their social media and they post something really shady about about yeah, you personally that's about that entire demographic too being unemployed when you're being technically like kind of employed by this person uh where was i okay things were messy influencers saw it and did not want to work with us anymore my bad <laughs> but sadly no i did not get fired that would have been a blessing I caused probably millions of dollars of terminated contracts and was fully shunned from the influencer relations team. This is bad. She's not making this up because I went on the Reddit that she had sent that she found and it's bad. Things were bad when this was posted. On the plus side, the internet went wild with memes about how bad of a week our social media manager was having. <laughs> and in actual, so our camper is not the social media manager. She was coming up with the copy and the campaigns, but there was a social media manager she was sending them to. Uh, and that really pissed off the actual social media manager. So why did the social media manager post it? And that is a good question. Like she didn't, she didn't have anyone that edited her post, but the social media manager had to plug that in and click. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really their fault. Well, I don't know because I did work at a job that I was managing social media and I was told what to do and I didn't have, I wasn't in the creative copy 
space. Like I was just told like, here's this, put it with this, schedule it for this day and kind of like given the calendar and all the copy. And I, I didn't really have a say in it. So I guess I kind of got it, but I'm on your side camper kind of, <laughs> it's getting a little rocky on these seas in this confession canoe. Um, unfortunately the CEO did not appreciate it when I quoted back to him, no publicity is bad publicity. Am I right? Oh my gosh. Stop. I love that. I can't believe, I can't believe that. Yeah. Copywriters get no recognition and it's a really difficult job. It really is. I wanted to be a copywriter for a long time. I was actually doing a little bit of copy for some of my jobs. It's hard. And that was a really grueling schedule. Can't even go to the beach and relax. So anyway, what, uh, what sort do you have? I have another confession canoe. Um, forgive me for I have sinned. <laughs> okay. So that's what you were getting at earlier. Yes. Okay. Counselors, I have a confession. To be fair, I think we can all admit we have a little crazy in us, but I didn't know how crazy I could truly be until my relationship of four years was coming to an end. At the time, my ex and I were living together and had been for three years when he decided he wanted to break up. I was heartbroken to say the least. I didn't think I was going to survive the hurt I was feeling. And to make matters worse, we continued to live together for a few months after we decided who was going to keep the house, animals, etc. It's always hard when you break up and you have a lot of like mixed assets and you have yeah. to kind of like live through that. It is difficult. Yeah, definitely. And all, you know, breakups are hard to begin with. They're so hard. And it always feels like you're never going to get over it, but then you do. Yeah. During those first few months, my delusional ass thought we were for sure going to work it out, which he was eager to jump on dating sites and kick me to the curb. I decided I would do anything I could to keep him from being able to meet new people. Oh, God. This is sinister. Girl, where are we going? I love it. This included getting him blocked from all the dating sites. And she goes, this is so embarrassing to say looking back, but I truly didn't give a fuck how psycho I was being. I just knew I wanted him to stay with me. She was blinded. She was blinded by the day, and it happens. We've all been there. We've all been there. Now, I'm eager. What, what happened? I made a fake page and would report his profile anytime I came across it. First, I got him blocked from Hinge, which is actually sister companies to Tinder and Match.com. So that eliminated all of those. Wait, so run that back. She's making a fake account of him no she's making a fake a, a fake account as a woman oh and I, then when she matches with him she's reporting his account yeah or probably just reporting his account not even matching him and being like oh this person's doing something gross or like bad okay got it got or it. saying she's, something like hurtful or hate speech so she's getting him like kicked off of things got yeah it. and then did you know <laughs> that hinge was sister companies at tinder and match.com no that's crazy so when you get blocked from one you get blocked from all of them i was working double time and didn't even know it she said <laughs> Then it was on to Bumble, and that one was easy. I wish that that was the worst of it. But in those months we were living together, he bought new underwear and admitted to me that it was so that he had nice underwear to wear when he slept with new girls. <gasps> what? First of all, what a fucking weird thing to say. Like, obviously, it's a weird situation and, like, it's toxic and it shouldn't be happening. But, like, you don't even, like, obviously, she's very aware that you're seeing other people, but that's just, like, bitter and yeah, that's weird. Yeah, not, that's not the move. That's yeah. Not it. It made me sick to my stomach, so obviously my only option was to steal his underwear. Girl, obviously. <sighs> I would take a pair here and there when doing our laundry and stash them away in a pair of boots in my closet. Just like <laughs> dropping them down like a piggy bank. That's why I love how you said that. <laughs> I put a pair of boots in my closet. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did get ahead of myself and ended up stealing all seven pairs, and he confronted me. But again, no fucks were given. What did you? What do you say? That's You're, why I said good for her. Yeah, good for it's her. It's already over. It can't get any worse. <laughs> That's what we're Fuck doing it. for this camper. We're letting her know that her choices were justifiable. Yeah. yeah. Fast forward a year now, and he still doesn't know about the dating apps. It is so cringe to think I acted that way for a man who would hardly brush his teeth. Drag him. <laughs> he ended up only moving three houses away and still asked to get back together frequently. Ooh. But I'm happily working on myself and enjoying all the dating apps the world has to offer. All this to say, if you think you're not crazy, you probably just haven't been pushed to the limits yet, and hopefully you never have to get there. Sign the crazy bee in cabin three. Wow. Okay. And not him coming crawling back, trying to date again. She's like, I'm working on myself, babe. Like pfft, full, what is it? 180? 360? 180. 180. Did you catch her sign off? What? The crazy bee in cabin three. 
What? Isn't that the crazy bitch in apartment three? Oh, the crazy bitch in apartment 23, yeah. Oh, but I think it kind of like worked there. Okay, so I used to love that show with Kristen Ritter and I made you watch it. And I re- this is one of those moments where I talked the show up for quite some time and I thought it was so funny because when it came out, it was peak comedy and it was so my I'm type. sure there's campers out here who are still obsessed with it, but I will say like watching it with you, we, I gave it three episodes and I was like, this isn't, I, I, I love you and this can be one of your personal shows. It'd be like a little show for you. Well, there was only two seasons. It got canceled and we'll never know how it ends, which is really disappointing. I wonder why it got canceled. I don't know. I heard <laughs> word on the street is. Don't um, say No, like I can't. Jason I can't. Vanderbeek. So I made you watch that show and you were like, this is literally not funny. And at one point, I was like, you know what? This honestly isn't that funny. No, it's fine. It's good. It just like wasn't my cup of tea. But you know what is in my cup of tea? Getting your ex boyfriend blocked from all dating sites. Yeah, that's the kind of petty we love here at Camp Shady Bird. So thank you for writing that in. Would you have another confession canoe for us? Oh, I do have another confession canoe. Three confession canoe. It's a full. Ca- it's a full canoe. Oh my God, everybody, get out! We're sinking. We're sinking. We're sinking. Anyway, hi, counselors. <laughs> Can I boast for a moment? Of course you can. Yeah, like, we'll always leave room for boasting, please, and basting. Ew, <laughs> I like turkey. For a, can I boast for a moment about how wonderful you are, Zachariah? <gasps> Wait, keep going. <laughs> I fell in love with you on TikTok during quarantine and obsessively watched any video of you, especially in a wig. When you started the podcast with Jonathan, I was like, "Who was this guy?" And I'm sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> I didn't trust you with my heart at first. And you know what? That's okay. Because he was your first love and you were like, who is this person? And that's a healthy amount of skepticism. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, Jonathan, I didn't trust you with my whole heart at first. It's just reading it a second time doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, but I was so wrong. And actually, I think Jonathan is my brother from another mother. <laughs> we literally, spelled out phonetically, have the same thoughts. And sometimes I finish your sentences. That's my sweet. Connect. That was a very yes, sweet that is message. Thank sweet. you. Thank you so much. Freshman year of college can be tricky if you don't know anyone beforehand. Mm. It can be hard to find your tribe. Even harder to find your mans. 18-year-old me knew I was going to struggle in finding a man department. I was shy, a little awkward, and I had never been kissed. Okay, Drew Barrymore. But I'm an Aries, damn it. So you know we're always going to find a way to make the first move. Amen, girl. The idea came to me over fall break when I got bored and decided to give both my brothers a haircut. I didn't do half bad, and honestly, it was kind of fun. So I thought, what if I tell all the boys in the dorm that I can cut hair? And I'll cut theirs for free. Now, this is a girl with a marketing brain, like me and Jonathan both have. It's a girl who sees a business. It's a girl who sees a vision. And she's going to do what she wants to do. And she's going to launch a hair empire in the dorm. Like, I understand her brain process, and I, like, completely support it. It's giving fantastic Sam's. It's giving franchises are available. So I hijacked my brother's clippers, and I took them back to school. Found a boy in my dorm who I wasn't scared to talk to, and I offered to cut his hair. Smart move. As someone that you're not intimidated by. You're a genius. You're a businesswoman. That's great. He wasn't able to book a haircut over... Okay, so he wasn't able to book himself a haircut over break. So his hair was growing out a little long. And she's mm. like, you there, long hair boy. Who? Huh? Me? It's my improv, sorry. That was really good. Thanks. And he felt like he really needed to get a haircut, so he was happy that I was offering my services. <clears throat> I wasn't into this particular guy, but I figured if I did a good job, word would spread, and maybe... Girl, we already know the plan. Yeah, we're getting it. We're picking up what you're putting down. You're just trying to spread spread the news. Um, I cut his hair in the dorm hallway. Yeah, it makes complete sense. In order to gather attention and promote my new business. Yeah, keep it public facing. It works. A crowd began to form. I'm just picturing everybody chanting. They're like, what's going on out here? You know, you're seeing like a corny movie and everybody's like, whoa. Oh yeah, like someone gets a knock at their dorm and they're like, come quick. And they're like, you're not going to believe it. (laughs) Sam, she's cutting his hair and it looks really good. Second floor, be there, be square. Everyone's bringing kegs. It's like, okay, we're getting haircuts. Literally in the hallway and you know that it's like that weird fucking like white brick. I didn't go to cool college. Oh, well, it was like in high school. Didn't your high school have those walls that were like cold and you would run your pencil through the little cracks? Yeah, I guess. We're we're falling off track real quick. Let's get back on track. A crowd began to form (laughs) and soon there was a line of fresh men in all caps wanting me to cut their hair i told them i had experience and they didn't even question customer number one got a simple buzz cut and he was happy with the finished product 
Customer number two got bold and asked for a mohawk. <laughs> and by the grace of God, it looked somewhat okay, question mark. Got bold. Yeah, I like that. He was ecstatic. Immediately booked another appointment. <laughs> Customer number three. These are like great reviews for yourself. Customer number three is where things started to go downhill. Oh, no. He was on the rugby team and he had a reputation to uphold, which is now we're playing with fire. Now we're getting a little cocky. Yeah, because like when you are working with people in the rugby arena, you the first thing I think of is, oh, they have a reputation to uphold. That's all I can think about when I hear rugby. The reputation. Stick with Key Club. Let's stick in the realms where... What? I was the president of Key Club. I yeah. Here. So let's stick there. Back to the story. <laughs> <laughs> Customer number three is where things go downhill. I already said that. He had a crush on my friend, so I couldn't mess this up. I got distracted, and I took a noticeably large chunk of his hair with the clippers. I said, uh-oh. R- rookie move. So you don't, you can't audibly say, uh oh. No, you keep moving. You can't, but sometimes you can't help how your body does. You're right. And there's no taking it back. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is an Adam Sandler's click. We can't rewind on that, baby. Sorry. I tried to play it off and act like it wasn't anything bad, but he whipped out his pocket mirror. Who is this? Yeah. First of all, what does he have? A compact in his pocket on the rugby team? <laughs> He's playing for a different team, sweetie. Yeah. I was going to say, gay boy. <laughs> Sorry. That was actually so rude of us to say. We are being out of pocket like I this had mirror. a white claw. And we had something we had to say. <laughs> Listen, it's our show. He took out his pocket mirror. He assessed the, da- assessed the damage and got mad at me. Me, a non-professional hairdresser. We both knew the only way to fix it was to shave it all off. Oh, she went deep. Sometimes it really is for men's haircuts the only way out of it. But honestly, it could have looked cool because I have... Have you ever noticed it? I'm sure you have. I can't see it because it's in a spot I can't wear. I cracked my head open on the back of my head. Yeah. But hair doesn't grow there because it's scar tissue. Yeah, there's like a line. Yeah, so it kind of just could be a badass story. I I don't think this is what that's giving babe at this point. She could have took a big chunk out. Yeah. Uh, the only way to fix it was to shave all his hair off, and that's what we did. He did not look good with a bald head. I felt bad, but I also did not want to dissolve my business just yet. I just needed more heads. Ultimately, I ended up cutting hair a few more times, messing up on a few several occasions, and I effed up my ex-boyfriend's hair and even my now husband's hair. Oh, that's cute. You won't quit, girl. You're going to keep trying. That's one thing about you. You're going to keep trying. I never told him nor anyone that I wasn't a real hairdresser. I'm sure they all caught on, girl. I I don't know if you were that slick. But here I am confessing to you all now. Life is short and boys are dumb, so cut their hair and try to make out with one of them. <laughs> what a poem. Signed, Buzz Cut Betty in Cabin 18. I want to name her Sam, and I want to hear that this is the origin story to Fantastic Sam's. This is a Fantastic Sam story. I've never been to a Fantastic Sam's. I got, so this is why I've been to a Fantastic Sam, and they forgot to cut a giant chunk of my hair off. The opposite. Mm-hmm. Like, I came home and there was like a, a quadrant of my skull that wasn't had cut. been uncut. Oh, yeah. Kind of European style. It was. It was giving European flip. I had a really bad haircut. I had one really bad haircut that stands out. It was two days before prom, and it was irrepar- irreparable, irreparable, some would say properly. The girl, it was so bad, the girl got fired. There was a whole blowout. The girl got fired, and it was, it was, was bad. It, can you define what a blowout is at the hair salon? Well, I wasn't there, but I know that they were having a tiff. The girl. So here's what happened. You love to weave a tail. Let's hear it. Let me. Here I am weaving. You won't believe it. So (laughs) (laughs) I'm sitting in the chair and I'm telling her that I'm going to prom. And this girl (laughs) who wasn't my normal girl was telling me about her terrible experience at prom and about this guy who like fucked her over. This is my junior prom. So this is like, this wasn't even my senior prom, which uh, arguably is the more important one. But she's telling me about this bad experience she had. And she's like going at like my, the back of my neck like this. And she's cutting my like bangs and almost like a bowl cut. And she's like mad. She's not having a good time. And this was, I don't think I could drive at the time because my mom had driven me there. And I remember before we left, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, Maybe I can style it or something. Maybe I can style it or something. And I didn't say anything. And the second I got in the car, my mom said, I'm going to call you out of school tomorrow. That's when I knew it was bad. 
we oh my god we have family photos too you know those photos that went on oh, my parents stairs I do. you've seen the haircut that was yeah like it, a it month wasn't... after that was a month after that was after it grew out that was summertime this was spring yeah i i seem like she was working through her trauma i don't care don't do it on my head no I, I i agree i'm just i'm trying to see where she was coming from don't think it's right but sometimes it's good to just put yourself and really identify where it's coming from i am a judge and i always look at both sides of the case I look at the defendant. I look at the plaintiff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to keep an open perspective. And that's okay. That's all I can ask for. Thank you. But I do think that you were wronged by that woman. What's her name? Veronica? I couldn't even tell you. Where's Veronica Mars been? We're not going to handle that on today's episode. I think it's all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. If you have any stories. Yeah, or any tales, anything you want to confess to, even if it's bad and borderline illegal, we are not encouraging it. We are not encouraging we'll just put it. put it on the Patreon if it's too rough. Yeah, if it's too rough, we're still going to share it with the entire world. But you can uh, go to campcounselorspodcast.com or send us an email at campcounselorspod at gmail.com. You have oh, something to say. Yeah, also one little note. We've had some campers that have submitted articles and pictures. And some of you seem like you don't care if we post it. But unless you say in your email or in your message, like, oh, like, I'm cool with you using this photo. We're never going to use it. Because sometimes I think people just want to show us the proof of yes. something. And I love that because we'll always look at it. But unless you say in your email, you can share this, it will never end up on the Instagram or the YouTube. Yeah. But like, because I, I, I get it. Sometimes they just want to show us it, but they don't want everyone else to see it, which I understand. Right, exactly. Good I'm like, point. as long as I got the juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Um, we'll see you next week. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.